Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. So today we're going to be looking at a specific weapon. We're going to be looking at the Flamer. Uh, because basically the Flamer has undergone a radical change uh, in 8th edition for the last God knows how many editions, at least since 2nd edition all the way through to 7th edition. The Flamer uh, worked exactly the same way. Um, it was a template weapon. You had a template that you put down, a little 8-inch sort of teardrop uh, shaped template. And any model that was underneath it got hit, basically. There were some additions where there were like partial hits. But basically, the Flamer was the perfect weapon for taking on hordes. And because often horde armies would struggle to space out all their models, they'd have to bunch up, especially if it was horde armies like orcs, where they're trying to get as many people into combat as possible. Um, so yeah, the Flamer was, that's traditionally what the Flamer always did. It was a good, cheap, anti-horde weapon. And I know a lot of guard players that, you know, swore down that the Flamer was better than the grenade launcher. Because um, that was sort of the rivalry for, for normal Imperial Guard infantry squads. It was always a case of do you take the Flamer or do you take the Grenade Launcher if you're looking for a cheap upgrade option. Um, and there was a lot of people that were in the Grenade Launcher camp, like myself, that said, you know, it's better to have uh, sort of mediocre shots every turn than hope for that one hit sort of wonder that you can do with the Flamer. Because you generally only ever really got one shot out of the Flamer before your guardsmen got murdered because it's really short range. Um, but now, like I said, things have changed. The flavor is no longer a template weapon. It just does D6 automatic hits. So, in many ways, that is an improvement. Well, in one way, that is an improvement, I should say. But in many ways, I think that's kind of a, a disadvantage. I feel like the flavor, if I'm going to be honest, guys, has kind of been nerfed in many ways. And you have to be quite clever about how you're going to bring it to uh, bring it to the table. So... When I talk about flamers here, I'm generally speaking about flamers and heavy flamers, uh, not torrent weapons. You know, the torrent weapons have got, like the Hellhound, we know the torrent weapon of the Hellhound is good because of its long range. But the issue with, um, is with flamers and heavy flamers is they're very short ranged. So that's a, you know, I, I draw the distinction there. So we're talking about flamers and heavy flamers today. Now, the advantage of the fact that you do a random number of shots, and it is really the only advantage, is now the Flamer is better against single wound, single model uh, units. Often you would bring a Flamer, if, if you'd uh, gun down a Space Marine squad to you know one or two guys, and then you put the Flamer template down, the most number of hits you could get was two. One or two, you could only hit the models you could see. That, that that was back in the day. Now there could be one model in that unit, but if you roll a, a six on the d6 and there were shots you get, then you can put six hits on that individual guy, and that gives you a much greater chance of killing him. However, I feel that's kind of like a bad advantage to have because making the flamer better against individual guys is kind of counter to the whole point of taking a flamer which is to burn big units of guys the fact that you're if you've and also when you think about it, if you've murdered a space marine squad down to you know one maybe two guys you're probably not that bothered about them anymore that space marine tactical squad or assault squad it's not really a huge threat anymore i mean at most it's gonna probably charge in against a 10-man infantry squad of our own and they'll probably struggle so Making a weapon that's designed for killing big swaths of guys, uh, good at killing individual guys, seems counterproductive to me. Moving on to that, talking about big groups of guys, I feel like the Flamer really struggles against big groups now. Really struggles. Um, I'm sure we've all had it in 8th edition now, where we've been rocking the Flamer or the Heavy Flamer. We've been like, right, there's a big enemy unit of like, you know, 20, 20 orcs, 20 gaunts. Um, Let's let's just burn them, and then you're like, oh, I rolled a d6 and got a one. Okay, I slight and you know, and then I slightly tickled a gaunt. I killed a gaunt. You know, it's like back in the day, it's like that's a twenty man gaunt unit. I'm laying down the template. Uh, you know, I'm AP six on the flamer, so I would have been ignoring their armor. And oh look, you know, I've just murdered seven, eight. 
if the enemy's not spe spaced out properly, you could get nine guys under a template. So the flamer has actually become worse at killing uh, units, or, you know, big mob units on an individual basis. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there saying, yes, but what about if you take multiple flamers? And it's like, okay, but the problem still exists. You know, if you've got someone... Let's say if you if you've got um like people are talking about the Lehman Russ fireball at the moment, where it's like you know, if you've got um uh like what was it, three heavy flamers on a Lehman Russ, you know, back in the day that would have been like, okay, I'll get say on average we get five to six guys under each template. We're talking about a big mob unit here, guys. Then that's what, fifteen to eighteen hits? Now, with the new system, that averages out to 10 to 11 hits. So still, not as good. I'm sorry, guys, it's just not as good. So, I do feel like the Flamer has been nerfed in, in a lot of ways. Um, I also feel like it's not... I feel like we have to be clever about how where we take it. This is where I want to lead the video on to now. Where are we going to take the Flamer to make it most effective? If I'm going to be honest, I feel like the days of... A single flamer on an infantry squad to give it a bit of extra close punch is gone. I feel like those days are gone. No longer can you just whack a template down and cover half a tactical squad. And I know people did space the models out as well. I know that. But remember, flamers were normally good for burning people out of cover. And people did tend to have that sort of desire to, if there's a bit of cover, to squeeze all the models into it. So they often did end up quite bunched up in cover. You know, not all cover is big ruins. A lot of cover is little walls that people have to hide behind. And you could really, you know, get a lot of models into the template if you used your flamer properly. But that's gone now. So I feel like the days of having an infantry squad or two pounding up, you know, maybe a platoon, you know, three infantry squads pounding up the field and, you know, just they're going to take that objective from that tactical squad and they can't stop us kind of thing. I feel like those days are kind of gone or at the very least, the flamer isn't going to be in that story anymore. You know, I think people will be running up the field with plasma guns now. Um, and I feel like the days of having a platoon command squad, or in this case, just a command squad, rocking three or four flamers, jumping out the back of a chimera and, and burning people, I feel like those days have gone as well. Yeah, I do feel like those days have gone. So, I feel like the flamer should isn't really good on like an individual infantry squad basis and I feel like the platoon command squad idea could still kind of work but it's going to be it's going to have to implement it differently basically what I think the better way of flamers now is they're not an offensive weapon even though they've got the assault weapon profile they're not really an offensive weapon they no longer ignore cover they no longer are guaranteed to get you a, a certain number of hits. They are now a defensive weapon. One way that I've seen flamers used really, really effectively, and one way I have used flamers really, really effectively, is when someone tries to charge one of my units and it's got two or three flamers in there. I had an instant where I had two hellhounds right side by side, and then we tried to charge a dread knight into them. That was 4d6 templates. Uh, 4d6 shots. I took that te Dread Knight down to 4 wounds in my Overwatch. Admittedly it was because you know Inferno Cannons do 2 damage a pop. What I'm saying is that a Flamer hits just as hard in Overwatch as it does a, a, you know, in normal shooting. So they really are defensive weapons now. Which is kind of, it kind of sits wrongly with me. If we think back to the days of the you know, I'm no military historian, so if I'm wrong about this, I'm I'm willing to accept this. But, you know, I've always seen the flamethrower, especially, you know, in sort of, you know, World War II times, as you you use it to burn enemy out of, of uh, you know, bunkers and stuff. It was an offensive weapon. It was for attacking because it was only like, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I'm very generalizing here, but generally speaking, you know, people in World War II, when the flamethrower was, pretty popular in World War Two. Uh people didn't tend to like, you know, bayonet charge you anymore. Like the Japanese obviously did their Banzai charges and stuff, but you know what I mean? Generally speaking the the flamer was used to flush people out of cover and stuff. And it's not really represented like that anymore. 
And the Flame of Hazard had a huge boost to Overwatch because it used to just do D3 Wall of Death and now it does D6. So really, you know, the Flamer is a defensive weapon now. Um, I also feel like taking a single Flamer isn't the way to go. I talked about the Platoon Command Squad, I talked about the Lemurus Fireball where you just take loads of Heavy Flamers and stuff. I feel like Heavy Flamers on Lehman Russes is actually a good idea. I feel like it would help get past a lot of issues that the Lehman Russ has by, you know, just 3d6 heavy flamer templates, boom, that's like, you know, that averages out to 10 or 11 heavy flamer shots. Well, if you had three heavy bolters, that would only be, you know, nine shots and you'd have to still hit with them. So I do think the heavy, I do think having heavy flamers on, on Imperial Guard vehicles is a good idea because it really helps, especially the Lehman Russ, because that way, you know, your flamers still hit whether you move or not and your turret weapon isn't affected by you moving or not. So I think I think people are starting to realise with like the Chimera as well, the double heavy flamer Chimera is actually looking quite tasty now. So I feel like that's where flamers need to be used. Flame weapons need to be used. They need to be you need to you need to leverage multiple template, multiple flamers now just to make sure you're getting the same number of hits as you back you were back in the day. And you need to use them defensively. Like there's something to be said for charging like a Lehman Russ up the field. Uh, and your enemy being like, okay, well, I'm going to counterattack him with like these Vanguard veterans or something, and your guy, you're just like, okay, well, let me just roll my three d six, you know, defend, you know, Overwatch. You know, your opponent's face just fall, and there's people have been taking things like, you know, super heavies, hell hammers with what like eighteen flamer templates or something crazy. I don't know how many it is. It's a lot though. It's like one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten D six dice, I think, on a Hellhammer with with two sets of sponsons and a heavy flame on the front. I think you can do that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um so that's how you can do it. My one the stick in the mud here though is the cost of the flamer. This is something we haven't discussed yet. And it's something I want to end the video on on why I think why I I'm not a big fan of flamers for the Imperial Guard now. Flamer costs seven points. A plasma gun costs seven points. Thanks to our orders, we never re and, you know, thing people like Harker and Yarrick, Imperial Guard commanders never really need to worry about overcharging your weapons. You're always going to have those re-rolling ones. And if I, if someone said to me, you can have a weapon. And they both cost the same amount, and one does D6 strength four shots at only eight inch range, and one does strength basically strength eight AP minus three shots, damage two, and it can do two of those at a 12 inch range, so you've got potential of four damage. I know I choose the plasma gun every time, the plasma gun is better against a much larger variety of targets for the same price. It's just frustrating, you know, because we all love our flamers. I love flamers. I even, I'm still building, you know, some black templates with a couple of flamers just because you've got to burn the heretic, right? But they're not the best choice, which is a shame. And the heavy flamer, you know, talking about the Lemurus fireball, it's like, well, yeah, it's 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 a good tank, but are you really willing to pay three times seventeen for those heavy flamers? You know, that's a lot of points. So like 51 points for three heavy flamers, you're basically paying a third of the price of a tank again. Or for 24 points, you get yourself three heavy bolters. You know, for half the price, you can get those heavy bolters, which are going to be hitting every single turn, 36 inch range. You know, every single turn, you're going to be laying down a serious stack of five, four or five hits every turn. You know, it's, it's kind of stupid when you think about it. I'm sure... I've had a lot of people commenting saying, you need to try out the Lemus Fireball, you need to try it out. I'm like, yeah, on paper it looks good, but really? Again, you know, I said this in my Toughness 7 vs Toughness 8 follow-up video. My Lehman Russes don't tend to get close to the enemy. I tend to screen them so thickly with infantry that they never really get threatened by close-range weapons. So they never really should be using those flamers. Heavy Flamer sponsors used to be a really good thing in uh, 6th and 7th edition just because they were so cheap. It was 10 points for two. You know, and you could replace the one on the front. Your Heavy Bolt on the front with the Heavy Flamer for free. That was a really good way of getting a cheap Lehman Russ. Now, 
Heavy flamers are one of the most expensive choices. So, as you can see, I've sort of gone through the, it's been a bit of a meandering video. We've sort of thought about good things and some bad things and then some good things and some bad things. I like to try and end on a positive note. Um, because I don't want all you guys who have got all those flamers in your army looking at them and going, well, these are a fucking waste of time. They're, they're not a waste of time. What I want to say is, whilst flamers may cost the same as a plasma gun, and the plasma gun is probably better, the flamer isn't a bad weapon. It does have some merits. Um, you know, you don't have to roll to hit. If you can bring enough of them together in one spot, the enemy will feel the pain. The enemy, the flamer still has quite a large psychological impact, especially on newer players, because they expect it to do a lot of damage. So I've used my flamers a few times in 8th edition just to sort of, you know, have a game of chicken with my opponent, see who blinks first. Like, you know, he's there. I've got, you know, I've got a, a couple of infantry squads with a flamer in each, and my opponent has actually held off on charging against me because he doesn't want to take all the flamer overwatch. Even though it doesn't do a lot of damage, people have this idea in the head of flamethrower has been really good. Um, one thing to say now is back in the day, you know, I've talked about how you know you could get all these guys into your template for the flamer. Yeah, that's true. You had to be point blank range. You had to be literally an inch away from your opponent to get all those guys under the template. Now you could be one inch away from your enemy. You could be eight inches away from the enemy at maximum range. You still get d6 shots. So the flamer is. I know, again, it doesn't really feel right, but it's, you know, it's kind of better at a slightly longer range now. You don't have to get quite as close and personal with it. So, just to summarize, I feel like the flamer is a little expensive. I feel like the heavy flamer is massively expensive. Uh, I feel like they don't do a lot of damage, but they are better against individual units. And they are better again at longer range. However, I feel like having a flame that's good against individuals and a flame that's better at longer range just feels wrong. You know. So there we go. But for all of you guys that are looking at your flame of people and going, what the fuck? This is bullshit. Don't be disarmed. They're still fine. Remember, this is the positive note I'm going to end on. Remember, the Imperial Guard Index, there isn't really a bad choice when it comes to weapons. As long as you're not you know, taking an absolute hodgepodge mixed match of weapons, then taking a flamer heavy army, if you play it right, you'll do really well. And at the end of the day, if you know you're going to be playing orcs, you know, like green tide, if you know you're playing like little nids army, you can't really go wrong with the flamethrower in that regard. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. Tell me your experience with the flamer, not, not necessarily theory craft. But actually, I have used flamers to great effect. This is how I did it. Or, you know, you're right. Flamers are a bit lackluster this edition for Imperial Guard. Tell me what you think. I mean, at the end of the day, they still give you D6 shots that get past your shitty ballistic skill. At the end of the day, am I right? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, and I'll see you guys next time.